here we are in the Tesla Model S performance line. Now we could have the base model with the base battery, but you know what? Who wants base? Not this guy, okay? Not this guy. So this one with the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack gives us zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. And that's gonna feel like 416 horsepower and 443 pound feet of torque. Obviously an electric car, no sound. But you do hear this. <laughs> Me laughing. All right, so we're here with Franz van Holthausen. Thanks so much for being with us. Good to see you. You guys had an opportunity to build an electric vehicle from the ground up. So what are some of the advantages and, and disadvantages to doing that? There's pros and cons to them. Um, the pros are that you begin and end with exactly what you wanted to get. The cons are sometimes when you have a clean slate, the hardest thing to do is start. We created an architecture which is a skateboard. So we've got the batteries and the powertrain between the wheels and below the center line of the wheels. And then everything above that really became the opportunity space for us to design and create Model S. There's a flat floor. The battery pack is in the floor. There's no tunnel, so you can get three Adults no one's punished by sitting middle then, seat right, and exactly. sitting like this. Right? Crossing over the hump yes, or anything like yes. that. Now the display screen is beautiful, really well laid out. My web, I can go to my energy. It's easy to toggle through. Don't do that while driving, of course. I also have full customization of the gauge cluster in front of me which is really well laid out. It has this kind of cool multi-needle aspect to it. The nav you can actually put up on the dash here if you like. You can also keep it on the screen here as well. Like most performance style cars, there's a number of different modes you can get into. My steering is set at standard, but I can move it to sport if I want a little bit less play in the steering wheel, a little bit more feel. There's also control over my regenerative braking. Take a corner pretty sharp. It's still fun. Didn't feel scary at all, felt like I was totally in control. There's a traction control. You could turn that off, but because you've got rear wheel drive and a rear motor, I gotta think that's probably not a great idea. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave that on. They range in price from about 50 all the way up to $100,000, so quite a huge range. A lot of that has to do with the different battery packs. There's a 40 kilowatt hour, 60 kilowatt hour, and this has the 85 kilowatt hour. You guys have a different charger, a proprietary charger for Tesla. Why did you guys decide to do that? The primary reason for that is that the existing technologies, the J1772s and others, um, didn't really offer the functionality that we needed. Whereas our plug, all-in-one, supports everything from your average household plug all the way up to our 90 kilowatt DC fast charger, which we call the supercharger. And on the other cars, you have two inlets that need to do these two things. And even with those two inlets, you have almost only half the power that we're providing. So we have this one inlet. It's beautiful to look at, it's easy to use, it's small, and it does everything you could possibly want to do with the car. You don't even have to use the key to start it, not even a push button start, why do that? Again, it was about user experience. Why a key? Why do you need a key to start a car? It seems kind of antiquated. You approach the car, the car recognizes the key that's on you, and you sit in the seat, there's a sensor there, and you drive away. All right, that's it for our time with the Model S. Now, when Tesla came out with the Roadster, it was groundbreaking, but this thing sets a new standard for no compromise and no emissions. And it gets all the, the bells and the whistles, you get the luxury items that you'd expect from its competitors, but you don't use a drop of gas, and we love that. All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time.